Hello everyone. One Sunday, a priest announced to his congregation, I have got some good news and bad news. The good news is, we have enough money to pay for the construction of a new church. The bad news is, it is still out there in your pockets. Friends, according to a recent United Nations report, about 800 million people out of the 7.4 billion in the world are undernourished or have not enough food to eat. Why do so many millions of people suffer from hunger and poverty? Is it because there is not enough food for everyone on the planet? No. The truth is, there are enough resources on earth to feed everyone, but sad to say, they are not accessible to all. Human greed and selfishness keep millions of people in the grip of poverty. As someone puts it, there is enough for everybody's need, but not enough for everybody's greed. Friends, more than 700 years before the birth of Christ, the prophet Amos saw clearly what is happening today. He spoke against the complacent, rich and self-absorbed people in Israel who were enjoying a life of luxury and big fees while the poor suffered around them. In today's first reading, the prophet depicted the wealthy people lying on beds and couches of ivory, eating the best lamb, anointing themselves with the best oils and drinking the best wines, and he boldly and fearlessly condemned them and pronounced their destruction. Many of the prophets after Amos continued to condemn the people for their lack of sympathy for the poor and hungry, and warned them about the harsh consequences of their sin. Friends, the Gospel accounts of Jesus' life show that Jesus also fully understood the suffering of the poor. He was relentless in his condemnation of the wealth that people accumulated either at the expense of the poor or in defiance of a humble dependence on God. He condemned the selfishness and insensitivity of the people toward their suffering neighbor and encouraged those who wanted to be his followers to fulfill their obligation to help those in need. One such teaching that is very familiar to many of us is in today's Gospel. Friends, according to the parable, a rich man had a very comfortable life. He wore expensive clothes and ate good food every day. Meanwhile, a destitute, wearing old, dirty clothes and with sores all over his body, lay at his gate every day, waiting for any scrap of food to come from the rich man's home. But the rich man fed those scraps to his dogs. Jesus then gave an account of the complete reversal of fortune for the two men after their death. Lazarus was carried away by the angels to a place of comfort called Abraham's bosom, while the rich man was sent to a place of torment called hell. From there he called out to Abraham to send Lazarus with at least a drop of water to cool his tongue because he was in agony from the flames. Abraham denied the rich man's request by reminding him of his life of luxury, ease and indulgence and of the plight of Lazarus in his earthly life and the eternal separation between the place of comfort and the place of torment. Friends, what caused the reversal of fortune? The rich man's reversal of fortune was neither because he was wealthy not because he wore fine clothes and had good food every day, also not because he did any harm to Lazarus, but because he lacked compassion for the destitute. According to the Old Testament writings, the rich landowners were expected to share their land with the poor, God's people, in any number of ways. Based on this custom, the rich man was obligated to take care of Lazarus ensuring his basic needs were met. But this did not happen between the rich man and Lazarus. Even the dogs had more compassion and care for poor Lazarus than did the rich man. They licked his sores and eased his pain. 
So the rich man had been completely oblivious to the plight of the poor man outside his gates. Friends, when the rich man's first humble request for relief was denied, he begged Abraham to send Lazarus to his father's house to warn his brothers who were still alive on earth about making better choices so that they would never join him in hell. But Abraham denied his second request too by saying, If his brothers and others on earth did not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither would they listen to someone resurrected from the dead and repent. Friends, what could we learn from this story? First of all, we learn that heaven and hell are real places in one of which all people will live eternally after death. Even though we do not want to talk much about judgment after death or eternal condemnation to hell, the parable serves as a reminder that after we die, we are judged, and the reward we receive to be either in heaven or in hell will depend on how we live on earth. Hence, as true followers of Christ, we should look at all the commands and the instructions that Moses and all the prophets and Jesus have given to us and live accordingly. Secondly, as long as we hold the attitude of this rich man, we stand in danger of eternally separating ourselves from God and others. Hence, as true followers of Christ, we should not be in any way indifferent to the plight of others, nor hold things for ourselves. Instead, let us give away what we don't really need or use. Let us get into the habit of sharing what we can spare. And let us use our wealth to honor God and His people. Amen. God bless you.